Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, welcome to another lecture in great experiments in psychology and today we are going to discuss one of the most interesting cases in clinical psychology and this is the three faces of Eve or the story of Chris Sizemore. So to start off with, have you heard the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was a story written by uh, the by Robert Louis Stevenson and it spoke of an individual who had two types of personalities. So, or uh, he had a split personality and uh, at one part of the day, especially during morning, he was a very good man that is Dr. Jekyll who really helped out people and he was an academician and a scientist and at night he would display all the evil traits of his personality and he would go by the name of Mr. Hyde and both these individuals were really unaware of each other. Later on of course, they come to uh, uh, Mr. Hyde uh, starts uh, being more powerful than Dr. Jekyll and it, this had come out from one of his uh, Dr. Jekyll's experiments. So, that is how the story goes and is this beyond a story? So, this was written way back in the 1800s by Robert Louis Stevenson, but actually we get to see cases like this. So, cases of multiple personality being reported uh, throughout the history of psychology and psychiatry. So, uh, this uh, case of multiple personality, a case of multiple personality was a paper which uh, Thickpen and Cleckley reported in 1954 in Journal of Abnormal and Social Psychology and I thought that this should be interesting to add this to our lecture series. Uh, so, what is multiple personality disorder? So, this is now called dissociative identity disorder and um, there was uh, it was almost unknown till it was published by Thickpen and Cleckley in 1950s. And there uh, Thickpen and Cleckley spoke about a patient who reported to them as Eva White that is how they uh, call her Eva White and gradually with time uh, there was another personality that emerged and who was very different from Eva White and she called herself Eva Black and Eve Black and then there was another part, uh, another personality that emerged that is the third one and who called herself Jane. Mind you, it is just one person. So, Eve White, Eve Black and Jane are all three personalities belong to an one whole individual. So, can this really happen? So, then uh, they wrote a book on it and they also after the publication of the paper and there thereafter there was also a movie made and which really gained a lot of publicity. So, this other than Sibyl another case that was reported uh, later on, um, this is the most uh, popular uh, uh, papers uh, that have been cited in uh, in the history of psychiatry and psychology and uh, this is one of the most interesting cases uh, that have come forth. So, so basically multiple personality disorder or uh, dissociative identity disorder is, an, uh, is where an individual has one alternative or alter personality that controls behavior. So, the alter personality or the alters it can happen more than once, uh, it can be more than one occurs spontaneously and involuntarily and in the main function completely independently of each other. So, like you will see in Eve white and Eve black, they are uh, completely independent of each other and most of the time Eve white is unaware of Eve blacks um, actions. So, um, 
later on in 1994, uh, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders replaced the designation of multiple personality disorder with dissociative identity disorder. So, what is the what is dis dissociative ide uh, identity disorder and how does DSM 4 uh, text revised explain it. So, uh, DSM 4 says that the presence DID is the presence of two or more distinct identities or personal personality states that is the alters each with its own relatively enduring pattern of perceiving relating to and thinking about the environment and self. So, how they look into the world. Uh, look at the world and how they look into their self is different from the host personality that is from the individual. So, and at least two or th of these alters recurrently take control of the person's behavior and there is an inability to recall important personal information that is too ex uh, extensive to be explained by normal forgetting. So, uh, it is not that the individual uh, forgets things just by the course of normal forgetting. In DIDs, it is seen that certain uh, there are certain memory lapses which are related to an alternate alter personality's behavior. We will gradually see this as we go through the case. And the disturbance is not due to the direct physiological effects of substance abuse or any other medical condition. So, uh, typically the presenting personality or the host is the one who seeks treatment and he or she is generally unaware of the other alters. So, now let us uh, go to uh, this case of um, uh, Thigpen and Klecky. Um, so, Thigpen and Klecky rep were reported, reported about uh, treating a 25 year old woman whom they call Eve White and Eve White is a host personality who came to them who is referred to them because of severe and blinding headaches. So, that was fine she uh, was like any of the other cases and um, Corbett Thickpen who was looking at this case said that uh, she also reported of blackouts following the headaches. So, um, Eve White uh, had her, her symptoms, they felt that her symptoms were caused by a typical mixture of marital conflicts and personal frustrations. So, it was just like many of the other cases that Thigpen and Klecky were seeing. So, there was nothing about her case that stood out. But one day, Thigpen received a letter from Eve White and I um, will just show you the letter that it was uh, there was nothing extraordinary about the letter except that the last paragraph seemed to have been written by someone else and the, it had immature content and handwriting style and it was as if it was written by a child. So, this is the letter and you see this whole letter is written in, uh, in by one individual with a similar handwriting pattern, but this small last paragraph. Okay is as if uh, this if this is definitely different from uh, if, if even if we show it to a handwriting expert, he would say that this was different from the person who has written this. And it is not because of a uh, you know less space being available, but the type of writing was also very childlike and different. And this was the first time you know they saw something unusual about this patient. And the after this letter only the there was a dramatic unfolding of events and that is when you know they got to find out about another personality that was a part of Eve White. So, later uh, when in the next visit when they questioned about the letter Eve denied any knowledge of it. So, she, said, she started by saying that she had actually started writing the letter, but she believed that she had destroyed it unfinished. So, she did not she could not even remember that she had posted the letter and she definitely could not remember writing anything at the end of it. So, gradually when being questioned about it Eve became quite agitated during the interview and suddenly asked whether hearing an imaginary voice was a sign of insanity. 
So, this is the first time that Thickpen and Cleckley were getting to know some other aspects of Eve's personality. So, till then they had not heard about uh, auditory hallucination, but this was the first time she was Eve was talking about one. And um, Eve never previously mentioned any such symptoms. So, when uh, again Thickpen asked the question, if she put her hands above her head as if there was a shooting pain. So, it was like this and as if there is a shooting pain. After some time, she dropped her hands. So, it was something like this, she dropped her hand and she spoke out in a very different voice. She said, hi there doc and this was very, very different from the way Eve White spoke. So, the familiar retiring conventional Eve White had been replaced by a newcomer with a devilish and carefree personality who talked at length about Eve White as a different person. So, just imagine about a person sitting in front of you and suddenly after uh, uh, putting pressing his hand or pressing her hand on her head suddenly goes to a different switch is on to a different role altogether talking about this same individual Eve White as if she was a stranger, she was a different person. So, on being asked who she was, she said oh I am Eve Black. To all intents and purposes thick pen had been joined by a completely different person. So, during their exploration of the case, Thickpen and Cleckley came across a distant re relative who revealed that Eve White had been married before. So, she was already married now and she was having problems in her marriage. So, that is how Eve White had presented uh, to Thickpen in initially, but then uh, with further exploration with other relatives, it was after Eve Black had emerged, they got to know that there was another marriage. Uh, at the background, which Eve White had never mentioned about. And when Eve White was asked about that marriage, she completely denied. Eve Black, when in that altered state, when Eve Black was asked about the uh, marriage and she was questioned several times, she said that yes, she had been married, but this marriage was only, uh, this in this marriage only Eve Black was a bride, Eve White was not aware. And she mentioned about a time when she was staying with her family and there was a, after a wild night out um, when she had been partying, she uh, almost jokingly um, got married in an informal ceremony, marriage ceremony with a guy and she lived, had lived with him for several months. And during this time, Eve Black had been more dominant and Eve White as if was not present at all. So, Eve White had no recollection of the marriage and Eve Black, Eve Black claimed that this was because she had been able to erase it from Eve White's memory. So, just imagine what would happen if we got to see a case like this in India, in um, say in your neighborhood or um, in any of uh, in any of the villages. Most of the times such cases would be reported as being possessed and um, as if there is a ghost who has possessed the girl. But with the um, um, and uh, you know there have been several films also about it and um, in psychiatry and in clinical psychology we would put it as a dis uh, dissociative identity disorder. So, uh, so now we have got to see two personalities in one individual. So, one is Eve White who is a host personality and there is Eve Black who has emerged when uh, she was being um, uh, after after some time when she started um, when there was a scribble on the letter and with that emerged the second per personality. So, now uh, Cleckpen and uh, Thickpen and Cleckley they started treating Eve White and they um, also saw that Eve uh, so both ways. So, basically they were treating Eve White as well as Eve Black and the major method of th treatment was simply by talking to each uh, one or the other of the personalities and especially trying to encourage them to talk about their childhood memories. So, it was more of a psychoanalytic perspective they were trying to take 
and Eve White was unaware of Eve Black, but Eve Black was very much aware of Eve White. So that is why when the blackouts happened with Eve White, she was not really sure of what was going on and that is the time when Eve Black several times would take up the personality. So, it would be like she was the altered personality and she carried on with her doings even about the marriage. That is why Eve White was unaware of the marriage at all. So, when not out, so Eve Black was aware of what Eve White was doing, whereas Eve White was not aware of Eve Black's actions as I mentioned. Although Eve Black would often spontaneously pop out, it was found that initially she could be called forth only under hypnosis. But after further therapeutic sessions, hypnosis was no longer necessary and if correctly called the personality, she would be present. So, just by calling Eve Black, she would take over Eve White as compared to previously. So, the treatment continued for the next 14 months and during a series of interviews totaling approximately 100 hours, extensive material was obtained about the behavior and inner life of both Eve White and Eve Black. And Thickpen and Cleckley reported that Eve Black had existent, existed and as an independent personality since Eve White's childhood and was a product of disruptive events in adulthood. So, they suggested that there was a fragmentation of the personality because uh, there was uh, that was her way, Eve White's way to cope with the frustrations and um, unfortunate circumstances and fortunate experiences that she had to bear. In fact, if you go through this case of multiple personality of uh, uh, Chris Sizemore, you will see that uh, Chris Sizemore is her real name, Eve White's real name. So, if you go through uh, Thickpen and Cleckley's um, case study or even her book, Chris Sizemore's book, you will see that she talks about her childhood experiences where uh, which are really, really unfortunate. Like uh, there is an experience which she shares about um, a man, her father used to work in a sawmill and uh, there was a siren one day and that just indicated that there is an accident that happened and everybody ran and she was a child who also ran and saw that there was this man who had been cut off into two pieces from the waist. So, it, this is a very unpleasant uh, experience for a child and uh, Eve White talks about seeing it as you know she could always see that there was another personality, another girl standing there and looking at the event. So, there was this fragmentation of personality at Cle as Thickpen and Cleckley suggested happened from childhood. And um, th as I mentioned that this if you go through Chris Sizemore's book you will get to see this. Uh, because also you know the time that she was growing up. So, the environment several times is also responsible. So, uh, you know there is um, um, you get to see such cases where uh, of dis dissociative identity disorder in India also, where uh, an individual is going through a lot of uh, pain and abuse. Uh, especially in uh, some of the uh, you know uh, rural households where uh, I am not suggesting that uh, this abuse happens only in rural households, but you often see where there is more of uh, over religiosity and there are cultural underpinnings that bring about uh, the emergence of the uh, possession of the possessed being or uh, being possessed by the demon or by the by uh, God by a powerful creature and you often see women uh, expressing uh, features of dissociative identity disorder in India. Unfortunately, most of the cases do not report to the hospital do not report to the clinical setting as a multiple personality disorder and most often than not they report to other uh, religious settings for treatment and if it is uh, being possessed by a uh, 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 god then uh, definitely due to the cultural underpinnings most of the times uh, they are not reported at all. So, uh, uh, Thickpen and Cleckley, they went about uh, seeing Eve and Black, e Eve White and Eve Black in a very um, uh, scientific manner and they did, they conducted psychometric and projective tests, but this was uh, done by an independent clinical psychologist named Dr. Leopold Winter. Uh, 
And Dr. Leopold Winter reported the diagnosis of MPD and uh, saw th that there was a contrast, uh, identified contrasting traits in the two women. So, this was done very blindly. So, he was not really aware initially that uh, it was uh, the same woman, but um, here. Uh, so, the psychological test findings they showed that Eve white had an I q of 110, while Eve black displayed an I q of 104. And uh, the personality of Eve white was demure, almost saintly, while Eve black was egocentric and a partying girl. So, her eyes would dance with mischief, expression of willfulness and she would never know sadness, while Eve White was very quiet and sad and uh, she was also very simple, neat and conservative, while Eve White's dressing was more of provocative. So, uh, you see that uh, uh, another very interesting feature is from the progressive test, where Eve White was very anxious about her role as wife and mother. She had a very small child and uh, she also had displayed obsessive compulsive traits, but uh, Eve Black was slightly hysterical and, but definitely more healthier, displayed more healthy uh, normal traits than Eve White. So, um, Regarding physical health also, Eve White had no allergies, but Eve Black was allergic to nylon. So, the treatment again continued for another 8 months period and then it was seen that Eve White was uh, progressing and the Eve Black was uh, coming, uh, coming out very less. She seemed very bored and uh, Eve White was uh, not being as troubled by her headaches and blackouts as uh, earlier and she also got a promotion in her job. She worked as a telephone operator and suddenly when all everything was going well, suddenly uh, things uh, became, uh, uh, things started regressing and Eve White's headaches and blackouts returned. And it was seen that uh, when earlier that whenever she had blackouts, it was when uh, the, there was a change, there was a transformation in the personalities. So, uh, that is uh, you know, so suddenly uh, this whole treatment which was improving, there was a uh, regression and on more than one occasion, Eve, Eve White was found by her housemates, so uh, lying unconscious on the floor and by this time she already had a divorce with her husband. So, and it was very clear that Eve's condition was deteriorating. So, at that point in time, one day during a session when she was recounting an incident from her childhood, she closed her eyes and fell silent. About two minutes later, she opened her eyes, looked around the room and before turning to Dr. Thickpen, asked in a very husky voice, who are you? So, just now there was a, an emergence of the third individual and she called herself Jane. So, now we have Eve White, Eve Black and Jane. So, Jane's disposition, Jane did not possess Eve Black's faults and was more mature, vivid, capable and possessing and had more initiative than Eve White. Jane was aware of Eve White and Eve Black and their actions and Jane was a mechanism through which the therapist could say when Eve Black was lying. Although Jane was not responsible, did not feel responsible for Eve White's um, social life, but uh, she had a lot of compassion for Eve White and she also will, was willing to help out with Eve White's work and uh, at home and also taking care of the child. So, um, they, now Thickman and Cleckley, they carried on an EEG uh, that is an electroencephalogram on all the three. So, if Black's records showed evidence of restlessness and muscle tension, her EEG was distinct from that of the other two and could be classified as borderline normal, while the other twos were very similar to each other. So, that is Eve White and Jane's EEG records were very similar to each other. Eve Black's was contrastingly different. So, what the, were the therapists Thick, Thickpen and Cleckley, were they being hoodwinked by um, by, an, by a very clever and shrewd actress, what do you think? 
So, that could that was one of the explanations that was given by a lot of researchers that maybe you know the this lady was uh, Eve White was a very skillful actress and she was really making a fool of these therapists. So, uh, strangely Thickman and Cleckley argue that the three had three personalities had become split off from once a unified whole. And they felt that if Jane had remained in full possession of the integrated human functioning, Eve would probably have regained full health adjusted satisfactorily and found her way to a happy life. So, Jane was the more most composed of the three personalities. So, if you look at uh, the even even the picture of the book it will show you three faces. So, if if it is it is more like uh, 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 the the good, the evil and the individual in between the more composed self in the bit in between and somehow uh, that would be Jane. So, if Jane Thickman and Cleckley felt that if Jane took overall possession, then Eve would have been uh, you know best adjusted to her personality uh, to her life and the environment, but unfortunately Jane did not wish to do that. So, um, later on Jane actually said uh, in one of the um, later on during at the end of the therapy it was seen that um, one day Eve White tried to say help save a child uh, on the road from an accident. And then Jane says that no I do not think it would be a good idea to uh, really remove Eve White. I cannot be such a good mother to Eve White's child. And so, that is how Thickman and Cleckley feel that the case was resolved and uh, they uh, gradually they uh, you know uh, they stopped seeing the case any further. But, um, after what happened after this was that uh, they wrote up their case study Thickpen and Clakely, they wrote up their case study into a book in 1957 and this uh, book was later again published and uh, became a film and it was uh, with the same name that is the three faces of faces of Eve in 1957. And it was translated, the book was translated into 22 different languages and the um, film also got several awards including the Oscar award. So, and both these books, both these books and the book and the film, they brought MPD or multiple personality disorder into public prominence. So, what happened? There was a, there was a multiple personality disorder explosion. So, everywhere there were new reports of MPDs uh, being uh, taken to the clinics or being you know uh, being made public and uh, so just by the statistics you can see that before 1980 there were just 200 cases in the entire world literature, but by 1984 there were more than 1000 in USA alone and this actually spread over across the world. So, gradually you know at that time also I mean right after uh, Thickman and Cleckley's uh, book and the movie by the same name, there, there were too many cases of multiple personality being reported. Now, um, most of them were this. So, this is the this is the picture from the movie. But uh, so most of the time, actually, uh, they Cleck, uh, Thickman and Cleckley reported that other than uh, Eve, there was only one more case they had that they had seen of MPD of their 30 years of practice. So, most of the times, most of the cases being reported were actually not cases of MPD. So, now after the movie, nothing was heard about Eve till 1977, when Chris Sizemore or Eve, who the real Eve again reappeared. So, she revealed about revealed herself to be the real Eve and uh, she disclosed some other uh, facts about herself and she also wrote another book. And she revealed that she had 22 personalities in her lifetime and those uh, had happened during and also after therapy. So, this is Chris Sizemore and uh, she says that uh, even in the book you if you read she she mentions that uh, she was uh, helped by Thickman and Cleckley, but they were not able to uh, remove this illness from her. So, 
uh, that is uh, how she uh, brings about her case. But what happened? So, the applications, uh, considering the applications and implications of this case. So, uh, this after this, there were also several legal cases where uh, people started after uh, a crime, people started uh, taking the uh, refuge of uh, being uh, you know unaware of the crime they committed. And there was, uh, so the, the next question that came into being was, how does a diagnosis of uh, dissociative identity disorder or multiple personality dis disorder stand as a legal defense in a court of law? And there were cases being uh, um, reported where they claimed that uh, they had committed the crime under the influence or unknowingly and they were pleading not guilty. So, um, there was uh, again, so Sachs in 1997, he was an American lawyer argued that new legal principles should be established namely irresponsibility by virtue of multiple personality disorder. And her arguments centered around defining personhood. So, they started, uh, she started saying that, well, if I am doing the act, who is this I? So, is do, does I mean my body or does I mean me being aware, me being conscious of my action? But uh, again, there were others arguing that uh, the if there has been a criminal's intense criminal intention and the individual was aware of it and did not try to prevent the crime, then he or she would be complicit in the crime and it would be at least partly responsible. So, there have been a lot of legal implications and also a lot of um, arguments that have been brought forth with the presentation of multiple personality disorder, but till this day. So, now this uh, dissociative identity disorder, but till this day we do get cases in the court where they report with uh, not being aware of their crime and they are generally reported as having been under the influence of a mental disorder. So, um, of course, with the arguments that took forth um, immediately after Zach's um, presentation in 1997, um, arguments and counter arguments followed and uh, nowadays you do not get a, 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 a pleading a plead of not guilty because of multiple personality disorder, but it of course, comes in the form of being um, mentally ill. So, uh, anyways, uh, considering this case of Eve White, Eve Black and Jane. So, it is important to study this in the, I believe that in our uh, discussion on uh, great experiments and studies in psychology, because this is again one of the novel cases that uh, show us that many phenomena that we consider as um, supernatural can actually be explained through science. And that is why there are ways of dealing with it, also explanations that would uh, follow, uh, uh, which are consistent with the um, behavioral patterns. Thank you.